Hello and welcome back to another video. Today, right out of the oven, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the 2024 iMath, the physics section. Uh, right off the bat, we're gonna start with question 55, which has a tiny bit of an error inside of it. And I felt like they should have removed this. They should probably remove this question and give the marks to anyone who has done it, uh, as it does not account for the variable V. Uh, they don't give us the time, they only give us distance, and they give us the breaking force. And as a result, in order to find out the power, what you have to to do is you have to use the formula obviously power is equal to force times velocity right however if we don't have the velocity we do know the force is 210 so we can just say 210 times v and that would be choice number a so a would be the correct answer but as you can see we're not accounting for v we're not including uh, v in the question and that's why i think that there is an error in this question and the uh, Italian Ministry of Education should check this out. Now let's take a look at question 56. It says an ideal gas in a container. This is a question we did in the thermodynamics question paper. It's really simple. You see guys, pressure and volume, they have a indirect relationship. So if the volume is tripled, then the pressure is simply going to be divided by three. That means choice A is the correct answer. Obviously B, C, D, and E are all wrong. Question 57, again, really simple. The amount of current that we have is 10 amperes. Uh, the amount of power that we are having is 2,922 watts. So what do we do? We want to find resistance, right? Right off the bat, I want to find voltage because for finding resistance, I know that resistance, according to Ohm's law, is voltage divided by current. I'm going to go ahead and find power by using an equation of power that includes voltage. Hmm, let me think. Which one? What do you think? Well, voltage times current works, right? So we can say the voltage is going to be the power, which is 2,922, divided by the amount of current, which is actually 10. So the voltage in this question is 292.2 volts. Now that we have the voltage, we can just divide the 292.2 by the amount of current, which is I, which is again 10. That gives us 29.2, uh, 22 amperes, which makes choice A the correct answer again. Uh, question 58 says, an electron in motion with a constant velocity enters a uniform magnetic field. Okay, it's uniform. That means it's going to give us constant velocity if it moves in its uh, perpendicular to its direction. Uh, if it's moving, you know, parallel to the magnetic field line. So imagine these are the uh, magnetic field lines uh, that we're discussing. And this is the particle. If it's moving right across them like this, it's going to actually uh, sort of follow a sort of a trajectory that is different than when it is moving perpendicular to uh, the magnetic field lines. In fact, it might actually uh, come to a stop depending on what type of particle it is if it's moving parallel to the field lines. But anyways, if it's moving perpendicular to the field lines like over here, then it's going to go up and it's going to move with constant velocity. It's not going to follow a circular path at all. So all the questions that involve circular path and you know trajectory that is uh, talking about anything with a period or frequency is all off and the only correct choice is choice A because it talks about the fact that it's moving with constant velocity. So this would be the, the uh, when it's moving in a perpendicular uh, fashion. I'm talking about this one right here. And this first thing that I drew here, this is obviously when it's parallel to the magnetic field lines. All right, question 59. It's actually a quite interesting question. It's not difficult at all if you know a little bit of simple harmonics motion. So it's saying that uh, we have this sort of a, a, you know, function for sort of a particle that is moving and according to the laws of motion, where x is in meters and the omega is 2 pi. Now, the velocity of the point at this instant is what they want, right? What you have to do is you have to take the derivative of this function. So you take the derivative of function x with respect to time. You have to know a little bit of math for this. You have to go from the uh, you know displacement function to the velocity and time function. That means you have to take the derivative of the uh, function x with respect to time. And so what happens is when you take the derivative of a function of uh, cosinus, all you get is just negative the derivative of the inside times the sinus of that uh, same function. So what I mean is if the function of xt right here is 4 times cosinus of what's omega? It's 2 pi t. You have to take the derivative like this. You have to say vt is going to be whatever's inside here, bring it out, which is going to be 2 pi, multiplied by a negative, multiplied by the 4 that was outside, just change the cosinus to a sinus, times by 2 pi t. If you're not understanding this, it's because you need to freshen up your memory of derivative rules, but the simple rule would be that whenever you want to get to the v function, you just have to write it, at, imagine x being as a cosinus of omega t, right? Then all you have to do uh, 
uh, is just multiply the a by a negative and whatever is, uh, is the value of omega by that a and then change the cosinus to sinus and write it as the same as it was before so omega t so negative a omega sinus of omega t look what i did i just multiply the omega by the a and i added a negative and changed the cosinus to a sinus that's exactly what happens here so you're going to get negative 8 pi sinus of 2 pi t now you might be wondering is this all really necessary not really because time in this question happens to be one half right now if you multiply the t by this you have to kind of substitute that t inside of there so you have to find the v of one half and that will give you what that will give you negative 8 pi sinus of 2 pi times 1 over 2. So the 2's cancel out and the sinus of pi is equal to 0. So the velocity at that point is simply equal to 0. No need for any calculations further on. So the answer is 8. And last question, it says a pendulum rod moves from the vertical position. Which of the following statements is false? Now, make sure you check out our channel. We got uh, the whole paper over there. Uh, of course, all the answers are A uh, in this uh, easier one that is for, uh, you know, first loan ref uh, reference in the future. And of course, you can uh, check out our other videos if you're preparing for the next year's IMAT. Uh, one thing I'm saying about this paper is that it was really easy. So we're kind of expecting a lot of people to get above at least 50, I guess. I'm not really sure because a lot of people might not be telling the exact truth about their uh, scores. But good luck to every one of you and everyone that has been preparing so hard up until now. Now, let's get back to the question. It says, which of the following statements is false? In the absence of friction, the motion of s is simple harmonic motion. Obviously, that's true. The, in the presence of friction, oscillatory motion is damped. Um, yes, if there's friction, then oscillatory motion is damped. It could be sort of like changed. The pendulum stops right after reaching a straight, certain height and then swings back. Yeah, we can kind of remember the motion of a pendulum. It goes up there and then comes back in the middle, stops there for a second, and then continues moving again. Stops there at the highest height and then goes back to the middle and then it continues until it can stop if there is um, a friction. So the pendulum describes a circular arc. That is obviously true. Let's take a look at A now. It says in the absence of friction, the pendulum tends to come to a stop. If there is no friction, this pendulum will go on doing its thing forever. So obviously the correct answer is A, which happens to be false. So it's actually the correct answer, but the answer itself is false. All right, guys. Best of luck. See you around. Take care for now. Stay tuned because we're going to be taking a look at its math section as well. Bye-bye for now.